welcome everybody to another round of World of Tanks subscriber replays. My name, as always, is Maxwell. And today's first video is for on the user Meola. That's Meola. He's driving the VK4502B on a encounter battle on the mines. Now, I know I've shown a few replays from this user Meola in the past and probably one of them reasonably recently. But I saw this one... And basically, I really wanted to show replay from the VK4502B because this thing doesn't get very much love. And I don't replay... I don't show replays from it very often at all. I think the last one was almost a year ago. And to be honest, I'm thinking about rebuying it because I'm thinking about doing the grind for the mouse. So I just want to showcase what this tank is capable of. So, this is a T9 heavy tank for the Germans. It's the opposite counterpart to the E75 and it leads on to the mouse. This thing has some fantastic armour on paper. Its frontal armour there is 170. And as you can see, it's very nicely sloped, although it does have that machine gun port weak spot. And its lower glaze is very, very small. So it is very good at bouncing shots. What it's not very good at is manoeuvring. With the turret mounted on the back, this thing can be a little bit tricky to use correctly. One thing it is good at, though, is side scraping. See there, takes a shot from a stock T29 there, and it goes straight into the turret ring. I think Meola just had a quick look there to see where that shot went, because that was a bit of a surprise to me that that one penetrated as well. So anyway, enough rabbiting on about what the VK is like and onto this replay. He's going to be contesting the cap circle here, trying to lay down some fire on the enemy. As you can see, the gun on this thing is pretty damn good. And uh, it is pretty bouncy as it just likes to throw shots. So it looks like the enemy team is pushing on this cap circle quite heavily here. There's Tiger 2 in the distance there. He takes two big hits from Meola, and I think he's decided now that he doesn't want to take any more. You can see Meola rocking forwards and backwards there, just in an effort to hide that machine gun port weak spot, so that anybody trying to shoot at it will almost invariably miss because you're rocking forwards and backwards. So the Allied team have to be careful, careful here because it's only really that IS-2 that's in the cap circle contesting that. So if they decide to rush him, then it uh, could prove problems for the Allied team. Although, there's only that IS-2 in the cap circle. There's a couple of tanks behind offering support as well as Meola here. And it looks like the IS-3 and T-34 are content just to camp behind these buildings here and not really push forwards. Meola got to be careful that he doesn't get caught short from the sides here. As he's got his sides and rear to the enemy at the moment. Did spot out that T-54 in Looks like he is focused elsewhere. Gets a good shot into the rear of that IS there. IS-3. And as you can see, the problem with this tank is when you're playing in a confined space with buildings, you have to bring out all of the front of your tank before you're able to get your turret on target. So that does lead to putting yourself in serious danger in order to get shots. What you can do is poke your rear out here, as Miola is doing, but then that exposes your side and rear armour to risk, and it's a lovely shot to take out the IS-3 there, pick up his first kill of the match. Things progressing pretty quickly here, as the enemy team is winning 10 kills to 8 at the moment, so Miola decided to set himself up in a side scraping position, or just abandoning that side scrape position to try and get an angle on this object 704 here. But decides to go for the E1 instead. As it's got considerably weaker armour. And could be a larger threat at the moment. And here you go. Sets himself up in a side scraping position. And that's one thing that this tank is very, very good at. Uh, the normal problem tanks have with side scraping is the you have to back off quite a lot to get your turret on target. With this thing you can sit in a side scraping position. Hiding the full front of your tank. And still be... And a pretty good angle in order to get your shots on target. E1 decides to rush around the corner, but I don't think he realises how tough this tank can be. Bounces his first and second shot there. Well, his first one went through, but he bounced his second and third. And the uh, Object 704 bounces. Neola puts one straight through his front plate. A little bit unfortunate that he's only left him with a few hit points. But it looks like the Ryan Mattel is there to mop up that one. And now this T-54 E1 is backing off as he's fired all four of his shots. Two of them penetrated, two of them bounced. And then the artillery comes in for the equaliser and takes out that T-54E1. Is also going to be duelling with a waffle tractor here. 
who has decided to try and flank around the sides here. He's going to have the speed advantage, but again, I think Miola's probably got the armor advantage. And it looks like it's just himself one-on-one -on -one with this waffle as the Comet looks like he's AFK in the middle of the sea there. So it's just Miola and the two artillery versus the Waffle, that Rhyme Battle, and their two artillery. So this one's going to be pretty damn risky. Neither of them wanting to go out and make the first move and make the first mistake. And the problem is, from this position, the Allied artillery isn't going to have a shot on target. Neither of them moving either. So I think the best idea here would be for Miola to try and set himself up in a side-scraping position. And trying to get a shot on that Waffle. Trying to hide his front plate. Waffle rocking backwards and forwards as well. Sorry, I should really call it a Waffen Trigger rather than a Waffle Tractor. So there we go. Miola sets himself up in a side scraping position. Gets a good shot on the Waffen Trigger there. And the Waffen Trigger is going to come around the corner. Take all the time in the world that he needs to have his shot. And he does damage. Goes straight through the front plate there. But he knows that he is in serious danger now. Trying to back off before the reload happens. Didn't make it in time. And that's kill number two. Finds the Rhyme Battle in the distance there. Going to try and back off behind the building in time. Does spot out the FV artillery. He takes his time and aims but misses. And it's just one second until his reload is done. Has a shot there but it was at a horrible, horrible angle at the side of the artillery there. And that one bounced. And he's got to be aware that that Rhyme Battle doesn't sneak around the side of him. Again, going to be setting himself up here. It was an excellent piece of play against the Waffentrager there earlier on. He couldn't keep in his side scraping position because he could have just come alongside and planted one straight through the side armour. So as it was, he pulled his front armour back on the target, but it wasn't quite enough to dissuade his shot. Ryan Mattel really should just try and charge him down here. He's still got full hit points. Hopefully the artillery is going to be focused on this position here, and I think the Ryan Mattel knows it as he's not coming around the corner. The FV artillery is coming around the corner, however, but he's not quite quick enough. Ooh, and the Rhyme Battle, for some reason, fires at the really sharp angle of the side armor of the VK here of Mayola, and that one bounces. And the Rhyme Battle's probably going to have just as long a reload as the VK here, if not a little longer. And the only saving grace is this Rhyme Battle does still have full hit points, but... Miola is in a beautiful side scraping position and the artillery comes in and Miola's able to finish him off and pick up kill number four. So excellent, excellent piece of play there. Just outplaying three or four enemies, one after another in this little town area. So absolutely excellent play there from Miola. Just going to keep the road covered towards the enemy spawn area as wants to be the first to get eyes on the enemy artillery if it decides to come in and try and stop this cap. And here he is, he's coming from the other side, trying to throw off the allied team. The allied artillery is coming in to try and get some shots on him, but it looks like he's coming around the corner to try and equalise this one. And it doesn't quite land, and Meol is able to pick up kill number 5 and almost 6,000 points of damage. So absolutely awesome replay there from Meola. Thank you very much for sending that one in. Don't forget to stick around, because as always, the score screens and another game are coming right up. And our second replay of the day is from the user Elias32101. That's Elias32101, and he's driving the Leopard PTA on a standard battle on Windstorm. Leopard PTA being a tier 9 medium tank for the Germans. So going to be in a platoon with some of his clan mates and a friend there. So himself and this T-54 should be able to... Oh no, they're not sticking together. Never mind, I was going to say they should be able to be uh, a pretty effective two-man wolf pack here. So Elias is going to be heading along the northern road here, doing what a good medium tank should do, which is get into a flanking and spotting position. These things play a lot more like light tanks than light tanks do these days. 
So, unfortunately, though, his allies are camping way, way in the back there. You see the Ag Panther 2 and that 5100. 5100 really should be using his speed and agility to get into an advanced position. And probably should be advancing along with Elias here. And the advantage of that is they can spot out any uh, early enemy tanks, get some shots on them, and then fall back as and when needed. Elias spots out that SU, ISU-152 and T-29 coming in here. Going to poke himself over the ridge in a second once his camo kicks back in. Just to see if he can see anybody else. Looks like it's just the ISU-152 and that T-29. Yet, uh, at the moment, you see he's already clicking on his allies there. Just kind of asking, why are you camping all the way in the back there? So, Elliot's going to do the smart thing of just not stick around in that advanced position when he doesn't really have the support of his allies, so just decides to drop back and head into the town to offer some help to those guys instead. So we're just going to speed this up as he makes the transition across into the town. Takes to a little ridge here just to see if he can get some shots across the way there on the advancing tanks. But it looks like can't quite spot anything out here. See that SU-152, but it looks like he's behind cover. So not quite able to get a shot on him. He is down in the river though, so if somebody can get some eyes on that area, it should be pretty easy just to put some damage into him. Elias got to be careful here though, that he doesn't get spotted out and doesn't take any significant damage from the front. See that there is that IS-8 on top of the ridge next to that church type building there. Is able to get a good shot on the side armour of that IS-8 there, gets a good chunk of damage onto him as he decides to just fully YOLO down the hill for this 3002. And unfortunately, it looks like he's uh, a little bit stuck there. Gets himself free. Works his way further down the hill and takes another big hit in the side. And Elias' ally in the T-54 turns up here. And the two of them should be able to do some good work on this IS-8 here. And uh, strip a good amount of his hit points off. As you can see, that IS-8 just really gunning for that 3002. The Jagdpanther picks him up in the end, but the Jagdpanther also gets killed again by the platoon here. T-54 landing some good shots on this IS-8. Elias going to be advancing forward, but unfortunately the roof of that building just in the way. Uh, doesn't want to take any shots in the side from this from this ISU here. Also spots out the T-21, so we're going to decide who he's got to shoot at. If he can get a nice high roll here. Nope, gets a ridiculously low roll on the ISU there. I'm not really sure it could have rolled high enough to kill him outright, but uh, still, that was still a very, very low roll here. Thinking about having a shot into the Fog of War. And beautiful, beautiful shot there to take out the SU-14-2. Didn't know exactly where he was. Remembered roughly where he was. Fired his gun in the direction he was able to pick up the kill. So a beautiful, beautiful piece of prediction work there to take out that piece of artillery. Now he's got flanking manoeuvres on all of the enemy, getting good shots on them as the T-54 finishes them off. And the enemy team is just dropping like flies right about now. All that's left on this flank is this T-29. Got to be careful because he's a little slightly hold down, but he is able to put one right through the top of that turret and pick up kill number two. So the game's going very nicely in their favour at the moment at 10 kills to 6. His ally in the 5120s dueling with a super pershing in the town. So the two medium tanks are going to transition across to offer some support. T-54 comes around and takes out one of them. And the other one looks like he's in this street here. So Elliot's just going to charge him down and try and take him out. Unfortunately though... Even though it's only tier 8, the Super Pershing does have pretty troll armour. So got to be careful on this one. The Super Pershing is backing off. He's not backing off too far. And Elias doesn't want to poke himself out just in case he takes some hits from anybody camping in the back there. Super Pershing did have a shot. He's able to sneak one through his front armour now. And this Super Pershing realises that there's no way he's going to be able to get away. So just decides to try and charge down the Leopard PTA here. Uh, not sure who's got the faster reload. Looks like it is the Super Pershing. Although the Super Pershing missed his shot. And now he's going to have to try and do something about this T-34. T-34 realises that this medium tank is here. And that's a beautiful shot to set him on fire. I think he was aiming for his track. But he'll take the fire any day of the week. And it looks like the T-34 has brought a fire extinguisher to the battle. And he's now advancing to try and maybe go and take on the 50-100. Is that? Yep, from the front. T-34 is a pretty... Pretty tough tank, 
So if he plays his cards right, he may be able to survive for a while, but it looks like that 5120's just got the... 5100's just got the best of him at the moment. Flanks around the side of them, and that allows Elias to come in and pick up their kill. And now there is just a Tortoise and this M103 left. Tortoise is backing off towards the Allied cap circle here. Trying to create some distance between himself and the enemy team, and the allied team even, sorry. But uh, the problem is this tortoise at this range has just got too many weak spots. He's too close and people are just going to be able to sail shots right through his armour. <coughs> as you can see, Elias landing two good shots already on this tortoise. 5100 not having as much luck. Trying to get something through his armour there. Elias three shots and three... Damaging shots there. This M103's done a fantastic job of clearing up the Allied team, though. He's, uh, he's protecting the base there. But one more shot, and Elias takes out the Tortoise, and that just leaves himself and this 5100 to try and take out this M103. They are going to have to be careful, though, because as noted, the M103 has cleaned up a good portion of the Allied team. He's got four kills to himself, and he's no slouch as a player. And I'm pretty sure that 5100 hasn't got very many hit points. Nope, he's only got 29. Uh, this M103 looks like he's only got 133 hit points himself. So Elias just goes ahead and loads the premium ammunition because he wants to guarantee this kill. So he's just going to be able to close him down. Takes his time on the shot. Lets his reticule close in. Takes his shot and picks up kill number 6 and the victory. So absolutely awesome replay there from Elias32101. Scoring 6 kills, a Top Gun medal and over 5,000 points of damage. It'll be slightly higher than it says on the scorecard there thanks to the blind shot on the artillery earlier on. So absolutely awesome replay from you. Thank you very much for sending that one in. Don't forget, guys, if you've got yourself a good replay, please send that into replay at screenreality.com. Link for that is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, found it informative, interesting, you learned something, or you just enjoyed it, please consider hitting that subscribe button and leave me a like or comment. This has been World of Tanks. I have been Maxwell, and I will catch you guys next time.